Alright, so man, so we've been covering Bleach Rebirth of Souls faithfully ever since the game got announced, and we've been, you know, breaking down the trailers and things like that, and I've also been keeping up with the Steam page because they actually like to release news there, but I didn't know they also put some interesting things on the actual website, man, and that's what we're going to be checking about, some things that we were actually able to catch with some of the characters and stuff like that, man, but today's anime question is going to be, whose awakening has been your favorite so far since we've been seeing in the trailers, man? Let me know in the comments, whose awakening has been your favorite, and this you might be interested in make sure to like comment subscribe turn the bell do all those nice things if you want to see more anime game content make sure to join the discord pinned in the description and the comments man but let's go ahead and hop straight into this video all right man so we're over here look at the website man we got an english like i said they also put stuff on the steam page but what we're probably going to start doing is man at the end of every like video when we're doing like the reaction trailers we're going to come here and we're just going to look at this stuff bro because they basically give like you know a good little breakdown of each character after bro so we got the normal ichigo here we're not going to look at the person because this just talks about their backstory but this is like one of the first characters that got announced but basically it says a character characterized by high damage and simple movement he has a high ability to get close to opponents we already knew this making him good at close quarters combat when awakened his abilities change to deal damage with his quick combos basically his bankai allowing him to fight in a slightly different way than before in addition he has a characteristic that strengthens his overall performance during reverse allowing him to take advantage of the different difference in spiritual power to deliver powerful blows this is basically part of his reverse action which allows him to actually be able to knock off more of your kunpaku especially if he has you in the sublimation like the you know the spirit drive and stuff like that so this is basically saying that the, the normal ichigo can he's the one that can really knock off a decent amount of your kompaku especially if you're using the reverse action this is going to be pretty interesting the one that we recently just got announced is Bankai Ichigo, and what we talk about with him, this is pretty interesting. He says he's a character with a full range of easy to use actions, so that's what both Ichigos. They're both pretty simple to use. It says including his unique projectile, Getsuga Tensho. So they're actually finally calling it the Getsuga Tensho. A lot of people are saying that with the original version, like the first Ichigo we got, he didn't really fully master the full Getsuga Tensho, which is why they weren't calling it that, but now we can see they are actually fully calling this because this is the way Waco Mundo, him fighting Ukiora version. And it says the spiritual pressure technique, swinging attack, and it says it's invincible when activated. So you're going to have some armor, so this is pretty good. And it says, but using the spiritual pressure technique, Getsuka Matai, he can exert a temporary explosive force, and with stable play, he can deal damage and use the accumulated spiritual power to grab the victory in one go. This is right here that's pretty crazy. It seems like this Ichigo also can turn the tide and maybe win the battle, like win the battle in one soul destruction move if you have like all the things, you know, actually paired up well. I tried to look up what it meant by Getsuka Matai. I wonder if they're just meaning Getsuka Tensho, but I don't know why they would put it in two different versions here. I don't really know what they mean by Getsuka Matai. Tie. Let me know in the comments if you actually know what that translation is. Uryu, there wasn't really too much with Uryu. I mean, kind of like the stuff that we basically knew. Character who keeps his enemies at a bay with a variety of longer distance attacks. At long distance, it's easy to maintain dominance because you can attack one-sidedly. But once they get close, you need to pull them away and regain your distance. So, like I said, he's a range. He's basically a zoner. If you successfully counter with Raid 2 Technique 2, you'll enter a spirit particle convergence state and be able to unleash fierce shots. When awakened, you'll always be in a convergence particle state. So they're basically saying, you know, this is going to be even better. His counter move where he basically is holding the sword and you hit it it's going to allow you to be in this particle convergence state which allows you to fire off some shots and this is actually going to be even more effective when you're using this awakening and we also know that Uryu is very similar to the Bankai Ichiko where he has a reawakening and I actually had somebody comment underneath my video on the last video appreciate you for that man I'm actually I didn't I couldn't find exactly what you're talking about on the website but if you don't know from the last video my theory was that reawakening seems like a very powerful concept and I don't think that you know they're going to be able to use reawakening awakening with sublimation and with you know spirit drive i think that maybe if you have a reawakening that's maybe going to replace your spirit drive or your sublimation or it's going to be like a last ditch effort and basically the guy in the comments was basically saying that um basically they said that you're only going to be able to use that awakening whenever you're really low on health so you going into the vasta loader form is going to be like when you're really low but i haven't been able to find that on the website yet I think they do say something about Ukiora whenever we actually look at Ukiora. So Chad, I mean, one of the main things I saw with Chad, like I said, it says part, charge up your own technique to the maximum, hitting your opponent at close range. The damage will jump up, so you can reduce your opponent's spiritual atoms in one go from any situation with a powerful blow. It takes time to charge your own technique, but you can hold it during battle, so it's important to build it up a little. 
by little and wait for the opportunity. So you can end things in one powerful blow. We've been seeing this, you know, they 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 promote this. End a battle in one blow. And it seems like Chad seems like you can keep charging this thing up throughout the whole battle. We actually saw like in his gameplay, you know, he was over here dodging and weaving while also still holding the energy in his arm. So Chad, it was, I think this is going to be pretty interesting to see how people end up using Chad, man. And I think these are the, like, uh, this kanji up here, I think is basically saying the people that are in the world of the living. I think the last person is Udahara. And his basic breakdown is just, you know, like they've already said it before, he's a well-balanced technique set to handle all variety of the situations, including long-range distance attacks with high deterrent power, wide-range flash attacks, and counter techniques. He is good at fighting by gradually quartering his opponents by restricting their movements. His overall strength is very high, but he also has large gaps, so it's important to make sure he hits them with his attacks. So basically, he's a balanced character, but it says here, his strength is high, but he has a large gap, basically meaning that his moves are a little bit slower to activate, so when you're using his moves, his spiritual pressure moves, you gotta make sure they hit, otherwise you're probably gonna get countered pretty easily. So he's powerful, but it takes time. So, you know, I think that's some pretty good balance that they did with Unohara. So we actually move over here to the people in the soul society man we got Rukia first I don't think there was nothing too crazy with Rukia when I looked at her it says a maneuverable character who is easy to attack so pretty similar to Ichigo where she's gonna be easy to pick up her performance of the easy to use projectile the self power changes depending on how long you hold down the button I'm pretty sure this is the Byakurai probably or the Hado you know that that's what this is the one they're talking about so it's important to use and according to the situation the spiritual pressure technique one has an invincible period when it's activated so it can be used as a counter attack I'll put the spiritual pressure move one on the screen so you can see which move this is that has the invincibility frame so like I saw from the Rukia gameplay it looked like you know she was zoning and she can get in that inside and outside Byaku, we might not stay on him too much because we pretty much know it. I think we even looked at this maybe before, maybe we did. But it says by switching from the sealed state of the symbol Zakura, which has a high attack power and is good for close quarters combat, and then release the state of symbol Zakura, which has a wide range attack. So we already know when it's sealed, close range, whenever it's released, he can do mid range and he, you know, more defensive. Good for mid range combat. You can change the distance to suit your advantage. It strengthens versati versatility, which allows for a forced distance that's weak against any opponent. After awakening, it will no longer be able to change form, but its attack performance at mid-range will increase, making it possible to push through an opponent in one go after maintaining an advantage position. So we saw this, you know, with Byakuya. Basically, you know, you know what it is. Sealed, he's going to be fighting close up when it's released. It's going to be mid-range, but he's going to be vulnerable a little bit close if you get inside. When you actually go to the Bunkai, you're not going to be able to switch back to, you know, being close range. You're stuck in that mid-range. Yoriichi... A character with high ability to get close to the opponent and strong close range attack that can close in and deal damage in one go. When an attack is activated from a step or a dash or her flash step or anything like that, its performance is enhanced and it has a strong ability to develop an offensive and maintain the flow. So you want to flash step and do things while you're going to your Ichi moves, which is pretty, you know, pretty expected since we know that she is a master of the flash step. Since its durability is not that high, the key to victory is how to read the opponent's action and continue attacking without being read by the opponent. So I'm guessing they're maybe saying that she loses her health pretty quickly, basically saying that she probably is going to be a character that, you know, can deal some damage, but she can also take the damage, which makes it a little bit suck for me, bro, because... I think this character is going to be great, but I think she's very much going to be a timing and knowing how to counter and when to use things. And I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I'm pretty bad when it comes to timing things and knowing like how to press a button at the exact perfect times, like, you know, parry and counter. So I really want to main Yoriichi, but I don't know if I'm going to have the skill level right in the beginning to actually better pull it off, man. I don't know, man. I'm hoping that we can, but Yoriichi look like she's going to be a little bit not too easy to pick up. I think there's going to be a learning gap with like really good Yoriichi and like mid Yodaichis. So Gein was one that actually had an interesting thing, man. So a character characterized by long-reaching attacks using his own Bakuto, the Shinyai. Attacks performed with the Shinyai extend deal high damage with the tip of his sword. So it's important to fight while maintaining the distance at which the tip of the attack will hit. So I'm wondering if he's, and it says here, on the other hand, his close range attacks are weak and his durability is low, so be careful of opponents approaching you. So you're actually going to want to zone with Geens that are saying that he is not good at close range attacks, which is also, you know, goes into the thing with the tip of his sword. So this is gonna be very interesting. I, like I said, I don't think he's gonna do too well with characters that can close the distance and get, you know, get in on him pretty easily. 
Next, we got Rangiku, man. So Rangiku, she has like, they surprised me with a little bit in deep with her character as well. They keep talking, so it says they, 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 they talked about this in the video too, talking about like changing the pace and controlling the pace of a battle. So it says, it says he, but it means, it means she. This is the bad translation. She is good at breaking the opponent's pace from mid-range and dealing damage. She is, str she is strong in playing the role that restricts the opponent's actions with her own techniques and in playing a role that exploits the opponent's weakness by combining her own technique with a special flash attack. She is a character that she fights steadily while incorporating other actions so that her abbots cannot be read. So, seems like you can play the long game with uh, Rangiku, and I'm very curious to see how she plays since they're saying that, you know, that you can control, like, breaking the opponent, like, you know, you can break the pace of the battle and also control the pace of the battle. So, I'm just very, I, I want to get my hands on this character and actually play with her because it didn't seem like she was just, you know, going to be that deep, but the way that they're talking about her, it's seeming like, you know, this character might have a little bit more depth to her depending on how you play with her, especially, you know, once we get to see her sword in the released form whenever she's actually playing. Next, we got, man, the boy Toshido, man. He's a guy, man. So we look at him, man, a character with many excellent projectiles using his zone Pakuto, Hyorin Maru. He is strong at keeping his opponents at bay from the mid-range, then jumping in when he sees an opening and attack them. His special flash is a long-range projectile and is important to, as a way to keep distant opponents at bay. By continued attack without allowing the opponent to attack, he enters the Tenso Juden state, which improves the performance of some techniques, allowing him to attack his opponents all at once. And I thought that Hitsugaya had one of the best trailers, the way that they're showing his moves. His moves were looking very interesting. And I like the fact that it says there's, you know, he's going to be using projectiles, and it seems like he's very much going to be a character that can keep the pressure on you for most of the battle. Like, you're going to have to be on your P's and Q's while you're fighting against Hitsugaya because he's going to be spamming you. And it's pretty cool that he can actually fight mid-range and he can get close up. And I, like I said, I feel like he had one of the best awakenings when it comes to, like, actually you know, like a full change of the character he got the wings and stuff everything just curious to see how much he's actually going to be able to move around better in this state whenever you know he's actually in his bunkai now what you're going to think is pretty interesting is the boy kimpachi bro when we look at the description of kimpachi now here's the thing with him a power type character who becomes stronger the more cornered he is. When his own spiritual atoms fall below half, a guard point appears in his special flash attack, allowing him to block the opponent's attack while still getting his own, making it easier to get close to the opponent despite low mobility. In addition, his unique techniques which increase in power when he withstands an opponent's attack. We saw this move where he was standing there and he was just getting slashed, and the destructive power of his soul rendering techniques when he is soul rending sublimation makes it easy for him to turn the tables when he's at a disadvantage. So like I was saying, if he's going to be able to knock off more Kompaku whenever he's in his awakened state, whenever he takes the blindfold off, he's pretty it looks like he's going to be pretty similar to Ichigo where if Kimpachi catches you slipping, he can hit you with, or you know, roughly maybe knock off about five to maybe six of your Kompaku. This is basically what it's seeming like. And I just thought it was really interesting how they says whenever his spiritual atoms fall below half, a guard point appears. This right here, allowing him to block the opponent's attack while still getting his own in. So it seems like, you know, the more you beat up Kenpachi, the more you're putting yourself in a vulnerable state of him actually being able to turn the tide. Like, man, I, I, I was thinking some of his moves, you know, looked a little bit, you know, normal besides like, you know, him being able to like, you know, eat all the blows in and then counter back. But if his power is, you know, increasing the more that you're knocking his atoms down, like knocking down his spiritual pressure, this is going to be a little bit annoying, man. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. I'm excited. And the last one is the recent one we got, which is Ukiyota Cypher, man. So, when we look at him, man, basically says, although he has uh, many relatively easy use of techniques, so they're basically saying that his Sero and also his instant regeneration are easy techniques, which, you know, obviously, they do seem like they're pretty simple to use, but managing the various gauges, so there's going to be quite a few gauges with him, it seems like, and judging the time of his techniques is important for this character. His unique techniques are powerful techniques that consume his own spiritual particles, that consume his health, using Sero's and stuff like that are going to actually 
actually consume his health and deal high damage and can be used in a wide range of situations such as covering up his own openings. In addition, so it says here, this is pretty interesting, he is the only Espada to have the second layer of sword release. So it seems like he's going to be the only character that's like the only Espada that's going to have a reawakening. I'm believing this is what they are saying, which allows him to display even more power towards the end of the battle. And this is what I think, you know, the dude that commented on my, you know, my video was trying to say right here, which allows him to display even more power towards the end of the battle. This is meaning that uh, this has got to be something that's only going to be able to kick in when you're down to like one or two Kompakus, which allows you to go to his actual second awakening estate, similar with Ichigo being able to go to the Vasto Lorde form. I'm believing this is only going to happen when you're knocked down to your final one or two Kompaku, and this should replace the sublimation or spirit drive. So there might be, you know, a little bit of a strategy to get past even having to fight Ichigo in the Vasto Lorde form, is just trying to finish him off in one go, knocking off like four or three Kompaku to just not even get within that little, you know, that little threshold of him being able to reawaken. That might be, you know, a little bit of a, a strategy that people use for these characters that have reawakenings, especially if the power boosts they get from these reawakenings are going to be able to change the tide of the battle pretty much. But let me know how y'all actually felt about, you know, me going through this and looking at this. We're going to start checking this website with each character reveal now, and we're going to look at this after we go through the trailer and stuff like that. So, you know, we can keep up with this since, you know, they're giving a little bit more details some things we do know but some things we didn't know so let me know in the comments how y'all felt about these details and now after seeing this man who is moving more up your list of being your main in bleach rebirth of souls man but make sure y'all stay in tune on the channel man we got a lot of things coming up man we got you know jjk bleach hunter hunter and we know that sparking zero is coming so you know we're going to be on that we got some nice ideas for that as well man all things anime over here but i hope y'all enjoyed this video man make sure you like subscribe turn the bell do all those nice things man. I'm going to see you on the next video. We up.